Hey, International Poetry Circle. Today, I'm with my friend, brilliant Hungarian poet and playwright, Peter Zavada. Uh, Peter, where are you? Hey, I'm in Budapest right now, and um, I, um, I'm really, I'm really um, happy to, to be here with you guys, and thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you for being here with us. Uh, so Peter was at a residency at a castle in Germany recently, and then he pretty much returned to self-isolation, and you've been there ever since, huh? Yeah, that's what happened. It's exactly what, what happened to us. Um, I went to Stuttgart in Germany to the Solitude um, Residency. It's a residency program for, for artists. And I, um, and I spent, I don't know, like three weeks there and because I had to come back um, from a, for, for a, a theater uh, premiere. But then the premiere was canceled and I had to, um, you know, I had to stay home. I had to stay uh, um, in self-isolation. So this is what's happening right now ever since. Yeah, we, we were just talking, uh, Poetry Circle, about uh, an online premiere that just happened. And Peter, will you, will you tell them about what the actors had to do, how they had to rehearse? Yeah, I mean, um, we were going to uh, premiere uh, this um, display at the theater that I'm working at um, at the moment, or at least I hope I'm still working there. I, have no <laughs> I don't know what's happening. But um, so yeah, so we were gonna um, have this premiere and it was canceled. Um, um, and uh, all the actors, you know, they, they, they knew their roles. I mean, they recited the lines, they knew everything by heart and, and we didn't want it to go to waste. So, um, so the director decided that we should have an online premiere. So what we did was everyone joined Zoom in a, you know, in a conference, chat conference room and, um, and everyone in their, in their homes um, recited the lines and and so there was like this I mean we uh, we did the, the entire play and it's really nice it was it's actually on YouTube right now um, um, you can you can check it out it's Andro uh from Racine the French uh, playwright so it's, it was an amazing um, experience to see how it actually works you know even from from such a um, huge distance between people um, yeah. but it still works because they really, really wanted to do it, you know, and it, and it showed their enthusiasm really just came across, you know, it was really nice. It was like a literal adaptation of an adaptation. Sure, yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to do a poetry swap. I'm going to read some of Peter's poems. He's going to read some of my poems. He's going to read one of his poems in, hung in the original Hungarian as well. And we're going to hang out a little bit and do some poetry. Great, let's do it. You ready, Peter? Yeah. Okay. This is Peter's poem. Oh, one more thing, because I love talking about translation. It's like the ultimate act of trust, and it's so generous. Peter has a special relationship with his translator, um, Mark Batsoni. Uh, you've known each other forever. <laughs> yeah, actually, we've known each other since we were um, maybe three years old, from uh, since, since kindergarten. It's really... It's like a cute story because our parents used to be good friends. Um, my mom passed away when I was nine, but before that she was really good friends with um, Mark's mom. So they used to hang out and I used to go to Mark's house all the time. And we would, you know, just play together. Uh, and um, we have all these photos from, the ch from our childhood, you know, where we're eating cakes and, and, and doing child stuff. So it was really funny. And, um, and he moved to London um um with his with his mom and um they had a new family there and then he moved back to budapest um, um actually um, some years ago and we 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 reconnected and it was like a huge thing you know and it turned out that he's really interested in in um literature he reads a lot he writes himself and he basically became a, um, a top, top, top quality translator. I mean, he's really amazing. Like his job is really amazing. And um, so I, I kept working with him and he's been my, so to say, official translator for the past years now. I love this story. So shout out to Mark. Yes. Thanks for these beautiful translations. And I'm going to read one now. This cool. is The Forgiveness of Sins. The noise of the cleaning machines is like that of the men in the confessional come by bus from town. What if they stopped talking one after the other eventually? They would make a chorus of silence. 
There's a few split seconds of delay between my right eye blinking and my left that makes for interference. And with time, the piers of the bridges in my mouth loosen. The abscess closes over me like the shell of a husk. My doubt is the axis around which this temple revolves. That which I have never confessed piles up inside me, nearing but never reaching the point of being said. This is a beautiful poem. Will you please read it in Hungarian for us? Yes, I will read it to you guys in Hungarian so you kind of get an idea what my beautiful language sounds like. It's weird. Um, okay, so in Hungarian, bűnbocsánat. A takarító gépek hangja, mint a gyontató fülkében a férfiaké, akik busszal érkeztek a város felől. Milyen volna, ha a beszédet egymás után hagynák abba? Előbb-utóbb kórusban hallgatnának. Néhány tized másodperc eltérés van a között, ahogy a jobb és a bal szemem pislog. Ez interferenciát okoz, és idővel meglazulnak a számban a hidak pillérei. Magház burkaként zárul rám az apszis. Ennek a templomnak a kétkedésem a forgás tengelye. Amit nem vallottam be, az föltorlódik bennem, közelít a kimondáshoz, de sosem éri el. So this is my poem in Hungarian. Beautiful. So we're going to continue. We picked out some poems um, that speak to each other. Yes, exactly, because Tara has a, a poem which has uh, a little bit to do with confession and absolution and, you know, uh, the confession of sins. It's a really, really nice poem entitled Indian River at Dusk. And it's from, um, uh, from, your, from your latest volume, right? It's from, from mm -hmm. uh, Amibab Game. Is yeah. It, is it yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Yep, you're right. Yes. So um, let me read it in English as far as my pronunciation goes. Okay. So Indian River at Dusk. The first and only time I caught a sheep head big enough to eat, black and white, breathing in my hands. On my way to get ice, I got distracted, tossed dad's keys in the water. I was a good Catholic. I walked him to the spot and pointed. I made up a lie, but I named everyone I loved to God before falling asleep in my yellow room every night. God was a word person. After two Hail Marys and an Our Father, I'd be good again. Like my words, I knew where the keys landed. I've tried to write about this before. For over a year, I made myself guiltless. Couldn't preserve the thing I caught or get the syntax right. I didn't know about currents. I can't keep anyone safe. So this is Tara's poem. Thank you, Peter. It, it's, um, I, I don't often hear people reading my poems, especially friends. And uh, I got to picture you doing, throwing my dad's keys in the water. <laughs> 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 it was nice. So I, oh, oh, so, oh yeah, we're gonna do guilt now, right? We're moving on from sinning to guilt. Yeah. So yeah, let's do that right away. Um, so Tara has another poem, which again has something to do with guilt. We are these, you know, we're, we have guilty conscience. I think we're that kind of people. <laughs> <laughs> which well, I think means we're probably not assholes. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably what it means, which is a good thing. So um, the poem is uh, entitled Guilt Eater. My mother's God, her mother's, her mother's mother's. He feeds us his guilt and we eat it like a dog eats a foul thing twice and do it again and again. 
I turn you to face me, take all of your sleeping breath in. I'm from a line of guilt eaters. I'm learning to keep it down. It's really nice. And I told you, but I'm going to say it again, how much I like the line, like a dog eats a foul thing twice. That's like, it really just stuck into my head. Thank you. We, but we really do with this guilt, you know? It's like, the best thing about guilt, I, I thought this recently, and it's something I tell myself over and over. The best thing about guilt is you can unguilt guilt. But it doesn't stop it from coming once you're trained to to eat, basically absorb it, like the way a dog will get sick and then see the same thing and go, oh, awesome, I'm going to eat it again. Yeah, I know. We have these <laughs> vicious oh. circles we never get out of, yeah. Yeah. Friends help. So I'm going to read one of Peter's poems. This is a longer poem. Um, and reading it now in self-isolation, I really, it's actually very timely right now, this poem, I think. It's called Porta Cabins. It's also translated by Mark Botsany. Porta Cabins. The routine of Porta Cabins, metal fences, has dissolved into the disinfectant white of waiting rooms, contoured reception desks, hospital green sofas. What before filled me with satisfaction has now birthed a siege of discomforts and habit has been replaced by a sort of determined stubbornness, though as plans go, I would hardly call it daring. It was clear. If I carelessly give way to what, by its very nature, crops up as temptation, then a single rash decision can bring with it a whole caravan of consequences. In the interests of the goal, only a resilient background could ensure the ideal circumstances. I was hard-headed, at long last, determined, I knew that if I grabbed that door handle like the butt of a pistol and pushed down, the room would explode into the darkness. I step out and immediately start gaining mass, drawn towards the geometric center of the forest, memorable cracks radiating out, branch still, the nakedness of noise. Only I can be the hero of my poem. And this upside down glass on the chipboard table, furrowed alienness. Or that layer of dust on the tomato, the brownish overripe spots of the peach as they spread out in rings like salt marks, the bright green burgeoning mold. Caring is what I do every day. And that has nothing to do with exhaustion but the wood still remains stubborn, even as it readies to my hand. Through the spade, I see the ore, the cathedral, the quarry, and there's a wound on the site of all creation. I'm full up with the city. I long to be back in a purer surfeit, where the wood is a kindly wastefulness, and rambling is time frittered without guilt. But instead, an end of summer feast and orchids, a starry carpet of fluorescent plankton on the front of the laser wrapped basilica and product samples in the magazines, smart carbon alloys. But what is most convincing in its purposiveness are the geraniums and gentian as history, like a Baroque allegory sprouting out of the ruins. The slow decay of the cops is a chance that I pass up, but it isn't only mine. What I mark out in space, a swollen knot, my associations accrete. The heart of memory suddenly collapses, the valley coils up around me. Look, the marshaled markers of spring, the obedient expanding circles of the wind, in the middle, a smaller central part surrounded by flowers. Their smoothness stretched tight upon them, their roughness pricking stubbornly out, 
the communicating vessels of the stalks, the truth of the petals taking the place of the bud now. Thank you. It's such an amazing thing to, to hear it from you, you know, from, from someone who actually speaks English. You know. Someone who actually speaks English. I, I was talking to you about this recently, how I think about this all the time, how strange it must be, because I have so many friends who speak beautiful English, uh, like you, and you have your poems translated by someone else, so then you receive the poems in English, which you, you, know, you speak fluently. And it must be a strange feeling to, to have these translations. Um, it's uh, actually amazing like? because you know you have a certain distance mm -hmm. that you never get it, uh, otherwise. And it's when you write your own poems in your own language, you, you can't really you know, um, just step out of that. Um, um, I don't know, relationship with the poem, which is a really tight, really, you know, um, strict relationship. And you can never, you know, just take a look at it from the outside. And when, when it's in another language, you can actually your own images, your own words may, um, you know, surprise you at a certain point. And, and it, and it's really, really an amazing, um, experience. It's not because the poem is good or bad. It doesn't matter. It's just like, you know, your own words coming, through this filter, which is another language, which is amazing. Yeah. And then you feel it when it clicks? Yeah, I, I totally feel it when it clicks, yeah. Was there a part of this longer poem, Porta Cabins, that was really, really hard or nearly impossible or impossible? To translate or to, mm -hmm. to listen to, to translate? Yeah. Um, mm, like what was well, one of the hardest moments? Um, I would have to ask Mark about that. I mean, he did an amazing job and he only had a few questions. You know, we, we talked about purposiveness, which is a, a philosophical word. Um, oh, it was such a hard word to get right. I'm proud of myself. <laughs> Manuel Kant, you know, when he, he speaks about beauty, like how beauty doesn't have a purpose only uh, for you to like it. So it's something like a, um, a purposiveness without a purpose, actually. And it's, um, I use that in the poem because you know, I'm talking about flowers and how they convince me with their, with their, um, you know, being beautiful without a purpose. So it's, yeah, it's really nice. So, you know, all these little details, but, but I mean, he's just, um, he, he's got a really good ear. So I guess, um, you know, he just did a, a great job. He really did. So we're going to share the link to that online premiere because it has subtitles in English. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the play that we mentioned earlier and you yeah, have also um, some new poems um, and we'll share the link to those too. Where are the new English translations? Uh, they're on um, the Schloss Solitude's website so that the castle's website you know um, um, the artist residency has it, his, its own um, web page and, and I published some of my English poems there again translated by Mark Bazzoni so you guys can check them out there. Wonderful. So I will send people there. You can count on me. And thank you so much for hanging out with me and International Poetry Circle. And thank you all. And please stay safe, stay well, stay home if you can. Uh, we're all in this together and we'll keep supporting each other and spreading poetry. And think about calling up a, a friend you know and doing a poem swap or reading two of your favorite poems. It's another way to be together during this time when we're so alone. Um, an amazing idea alone. that you came up with so yeah keep doing it and you thank know you. just hold up yep stay strong everybody okay thank you bye, bye, -bye.